You might think this shoe is ugly, but honestly, I think these things are kind of dope. I was recently out in LA and I stopped at Untied and I was looking at the shoe in hand and I was like, you know what? I think I need to add these to my collection. There's definitely been a lot of conversation around this shoe and I've been interested to see these things in hand and I'm looking forward to show you guys an in-depth review as well. Oh yeah, and if you didn't know by now, my name is DJ and this is the DNA show. And excuse me if I sound a little nasally, I've been under the weather for the past week. But before we get into all the details of this shoe, you know we gotta talk about the... <laughs> Woo! Damn! Alright, looking at the box right here, you can see CPFM did their thing even on the outside of the box as well. Now, as you can tell, it looks like a regular shoe box. Let me put it side by side to a different shoe box just so you guys can see what I'm talking about. So looking at the two boxes right here, you can definitely see this one's a lot wider and a lot taller when it comes to them side by side. And they took it to another level with the design elements on the box as well. You can see right here it just says Air Sunshine, and then on here it says Air Flea 2, you got the Nike, you got the yin and yang, and you got that same thing right here on the front of the box as well. Now lifting open the lid of the box, these come with a dust bag and it's like a terry cloth type of vibe and it's all yellow throughout the bag. Then you have green metal tips right here with the wax laces on the cinch area and then all throughout the front of the bag you have a nice embroidery with the Nike swoosh and the air here. Flea 2 just below that, the yin and yang, and then the classic Nike branding with the orange box and the white logo, and then the just do it just below that. Now if we're looking at the CPFM Swarovskis, as you can see they did a similar thing when it comes to the type of bag, just a different design. You have the just do it right there, then you have the smiley face with the character, and then the same thing right here, wax laces with the metal tips on the end. Now looking at the paper right here, you have your Nike branding and the CPFM with the clouds, and then you got the white paper behind that, and then you got the shoe. Oh you got the shoe. So normally I give you guys my first impression of this shoe but I've definitely already seen them and tried them on and honestly these things are pretty solid. I feel like this was something I needed in my collection. And I'll explain a little bit more of that later in the video, but we need to break down all the elements of this shoe because there is definitely a lot going on. So starting with the bottom of the shoe right here, you have that tire-like outsole, looking like the Balenciagas as well. A lot of people talk about that. But on here you have the footprint, and then within that, it's actually all glow in the dark as well for this area. Now there's only like three toes right here which I don't know, maybe this is some type of monster or something like that, but you got the toes on the front end and then you got the ball and the heel of the foot right here going around the back end. And you can see right there it's glowing in the dark, which is another dope touch to the shoe as well. Now going up to the midsole, it's all like that same type of material molded up right here around the toe, wrapping around the top, and then all the way up around the heel going to the back end here. And then you got that same thing right here, wrapping around both sides of the shoe as well. Now within that, there's two pieces right here you see there's another rubber piece that looks like it's kind of like bolted in and then there's another one right here on the inside of the foot as well around the back end around the heel of the foot. I originally thought this was like a removable piece with like an Allen wrench or something like that but then I looked at it and I seen it was all kind of molded in together just giving you another piece to the shoe. Now the biggest thing that sticks out on this shoe for a lot of people is what? The banana on the side of the foot. <laughs> well at least that's what I heard somebody say in the comment section. You got a cream colored Nike swoosh right here on the side of the foot and it has buttons on the back end that snap onto the side of the shoe and on the straps which we'll get to in a second and one thing that I'm leery about is it's like a suede type felt material and it's tan so if these things pop off or they start to get dirty I feel like it might not be any going back like if you try to clean it it might mess them up I don't know we shall see in time what people do with their pairs but this might be something that people might want to take note on as well because I heard that these fall off pretty often and if that happens these gonna get dirty really quick now besides from that you have a mixture of a couple different materials you kind of got like that neoprene and the mesh right here on the side of the foot and that's also wrapping around the front end then you have the velcro strap right here one there and then another one right here in the front end and these are adjustables you know loosen it strengthen and everything like that on the end of all these straps you have a plastic black piece right here and a kind of textured plastic on both ends right here to kind of keep that from fraying and then that's all stitched around and then you have four buttons on the top strap and then you have seven buttons right here on the bottom strap now this allows you to kind of accessorize the shoe and whether you put the swoosh like this or if you want to put it upside down or wrap it around the front end of the shoe like this whatever it may be again these snap on pretty decently, but they are kind of loose at the same time. So definitely beware when it comes to putting these on your shoes. Now unstrapping these, you can see there's, there's actually no laces that come with this sneaker, no additional laces, no anything. It's all just like this entire piece is one big elastic piece stitched on both sides of the foot where the eye holes typically go and it kind of stretches and expands right here. And then this will just lock the foot down 
with the two different straps right there. Now you have another pull tab right here. I don't know if this is 3M reflective or not. I haven't tested it yet, but it looks like a 3M reflective right here around the pull tab on the front. And then on the top of the tongue right here, you have the Just Do It branding with the gray patch, the yin and yang, and the Nike swoosh. And then right above that, you have the Flea 2 branding right here because this is the Flea 2 model. Now looking at the sock liner right here, you have a piping that goes all around and you see that theme throughout the other parts as well with kind of like that neoprene material that you see right here flapping over, same thing on the tongue and then the piping around the sock liner a little bit right here around the heel as well so a lot of embroidery and a lot of different elements that are added to this shoe uh, when it comes to the little details and how they kind of layered the materials now looking at the back end around the heel like I said earlier you have the rubber that wraps all the way up to the top kind of pointing right here giving you that triangular shape and then you have two different pull tabs one that says flea 2 and just behind that flea 2 as well and then the other one that says air on here and just behind that air as well and and then actually stitched onto the shoe around the heel area on the Achilles area, you have air. Now another detail on this shoe that we didn't go over earlier on the side of the foot, if you look at the side profile right here, you can see you have more of a textured material right here going around the front and all the way throughout the foot as well. And that wraps all the way around the entire shoe. And then you have a Nike swoosh that's actually kind of hidden right here around the toe area. And then on the same thing right here on the other foot. So it's kind of cut off because the patch is above one of the areas, but you can still see that swoosh kind of peeking through and that's kind of honestly the only area on this shoe that has Nike branding besides the tongue with the little Nike swoosh right here obviously yes you have this big swoosh but if you were to remove this swoosh there's really not that much Nike branding on this shoe now another dope element that I really love about the CPFMs if you look at the insole right here you see on the right side you have the thermal print and it says R and then on the left side you have the thermal print and it says L for right and left foot and this is a common thing that we have seen with the CPFM fleas or the CPFM Soroski's or the other shoes that they've done in previous collaborations. So I like how they stay consistent with that. It's a nice little touch for us sneakerheads as well. Now looking at the accessories that come along with this shoe right here, you have a hang tag with a red Nike CPFM right there. And then on this side right here, you have the classic retro Nike branding right here on the two different patches that can pop onto the shoe and anywhere you'd like. You have the yin and yang symbol and then you have two fleas right here. So a lot of people are like, are those spiders? I'm like, no, they're fleas. Cactus plant flea markets. It only makes sense, right? So you guys know I love my CPFM Soroski's. This has been a great addition to my collection. A very unique shoe. It's something that's been dope to just kind of throw on every now and then, especially for my special occasions. You guys know I wore these to my wedding. After the ceremony, we wore these at the dinner. Definitely great times and great memories. Now this shoe right here, the CPFM Flea 2. Now the Grinches, I couldn't do those. The other pair, I was looking for a pair, but they just didn't have them in my size. The sizing was really, really off on that. And then these ones, I heard about these and they said, you know what, they run really big. You got to get a size down. So I ended up picking up a size 12 and then I tried them on and I was like, you know what? These fit true to size. Like the 12 is not going to work for me. So I currently have a size 12 in my collection right now, but I definitely want to keep this shoe in my collection and I plan on getting a 13. So I'm looking for a trade right now. And then obviously you have the other color, the green and turquoise is blue or whatever you want to call that one as well those came out so considering those but i truly like the black ones a little bit more sleek they're bold and crazy but at the same time a little bit more low key I look forward to rocking these this fall and winter time, so I'm looking forward to working a trade out very, very soon. And I'm also interested to see what you guys think about this shoe. So I posted a poll on my story to see if the shoe was fire or trash in your opinion, and then I always post the results here on the channel. So I asked the people a simple question, and this is what they said. 26% of the people said fire, and 74% of the people said trash. Let me know what you think down below in the comment section if that was an accurate representation of how this shoe is. Now me, I say one thing. I like what CPFM is doing. They're pushing the boundaries. They're creating new molds, sneakers that we have never seen before, doing something different. And that is one reason why I like what they're doing. Now, do I like all the shoes and all the designs that they have? No, but I can say out of the sneakers that are the CPFM new type versions, you know, like I said, the Flea Ones and they had the different ones and the Grinches and the Knees and the Swarovskis, those type of shoes, I think these fall second on the list. I think it's the Swarovski, then these, 
then the first CPFM flea, and then the Grinch flea, I think probably would be my order when it comes to those four sneakers in particular. And then obviously, yes, they have a bunch of other collaborations as well. But when I think of those recent four releases right there, that's kind of how I would rank them. Let me know what you guys think down below in the comment section. There's no right answer. There's no wrong answer. But it also is crazy to see that these were going for like a thousand dollars and then they came out and the next thing you know, they're like a hundred bucks over retail and everybody's like, damn, they took L. So I'm glad I got these for a good price and I was able to get them for my collection. Now, I just still need to work that trade. So if anybody's looking for a 13, trade it for a 12, let me know down below in the comment section. Hit me up on Instagram or something. I appreciate you guys as always. I know I'm sorry, I'm sick. I've been trying to get these videos out. I'm working on it. I'm trying to get better, but we got more stuff coming. I got so many shoes backed up right now. Ah, this is so frustrating. All right, I'll see you guys in another one. Hit that subscribe button, we out. I would never let you down. Yo, before you go, I just launched my Sneakerhead Academy where we got everything on the inside. I teach you all the stuff that I learned over the past 15 years when it comes to sneakers, scaling, real estate, you name it. We talk about all of it in there. And there's an eight week program plus a bunch of monthly giveaways. I give away shoes literally way too much, honestly. But either way, I'll see you guys on the inside. Hit the link down below in my description or pinned in the comment section for DJ Sneakerhead Academy. And I'll see you guys over there. Hey, the only choice I like to make what I'm aware of. I would never let you down, it's in my DNA The only choice I like to make what I'm aware today